Good evening and welcome to our nightly telecast of Just the News, where we give you all of the important information about what's going on in the country and the world in just about 10 minutes. Uh, before we begin, uh, there is a trigger warning, a blanket trigger warning on this entire bulletin. It's going to be distressing because the information is distressing at this point. But that's the job. That's the information we have to give you. So before I begin, I want to issue a trigger warning to anyone who's already feeling anxious or worried about the information that is coming in. You might find this bulletin worrying. It might make sense not to watch it at all. It's also perhaps a little longer than 10 minutes today. Let's get straight to it. India has reported more than 3.15 lakh cases in the last 24 hours and over 2,100 deaths. This is the highest that any country has ever reported in this pandemic in one day. The numbers are really worrying because um, for the first time in India, we've reported more than 3 lakh cases in one day. There is a silver lining if you want to see it that way. India's deaths per million of the population is currently at around 128 as opposed to the global average, which is 380. But there are questions about India's reporting of those numbers of deaths, given the questions that have been raised in individual states, which would, of course, impact the total number. Now, keeping in mind the view or the of, or keeping in view the surge of cases across the country, the Prime Minister has cancelled his visit to Bengal tomorrow for the campaign that he would be addressing. Home Minister Amit Shah has also cut short his campaign today and cancelled two of his three Bengal meetings. Earlier this week, Congress leader Rahul Gandhi can cancelled his rallies in West Bengal as well. Information coming in right now from different cities. In Bengaluru, reports of ambulances forming long lines outside crematoriums waiting seven or eight hours outside of crematoriums for final rites to be performed of uh, COVID victims in incinerators that are functioning almost 24 hours and around the clock. The Hosapalya Electric Crematorium, which the City Corporation has assigned for COVID uh, out of the seven in the city, uh, apparently newspaper reports now quote uh, ambulance drivers saying they have to wait seven or eight hours to bring the body into the crematorium and the entire time they have to keep the uh, diesel running because they have to cool that ambulance and that is also becoming a challenge for them. With the rise in demand, crematoriums have now begun using a token system in Bangalore to make sure that bodies are cremated in order of their arrival. Last night in an urgent hearing at the Delhi High Court, the High Court directed the central government to ensure the supply of medical oxygen to hospitals by whatever means are required. The order was in response to an urgent plea that was filed by Max Healthcare, which was running short of oxygen. Max had informed the court at that time of the night that it had only three hours of oxygen left and oxygen would run out. And if it did, the lives of 400 patients, 262 who were COVID patients, were under threat. The court made several observations, including the supply of medical oxygen uh, from established sources were not able to meet the current demand and therefore it asked the central government to ensure demand was met from other sources. The court directed the central government to, if necessary, divert all oxygen from industries, particularly steel and petroleum, towards medical oxygen. The court also expressed deep disappointment in the steps that were taken by the central government so far to manage the crisis. To quote what was said in court, why is the government not waking up to reality? How is the government so oblivious to ground reality? We can't let people die, end quote. The court also reportedly slammed the center for still allowing industries to use oxygen despite its order on Tuesday. Quote, this is really ridiculous. You are concerned with industries when people die. That means human lives do not matter for the government, end quote. The court directed the central government to take over the production of oxygen from steel plants, even if it amounted to shutting down these industries. Steel and petroleum industries were also directed to make their oxygen production available to the central government. Today, the Supreme Court decided to take over all of the cases that are being heard by various high courts across the country. The Chief Justice of India, S.A. Bobde, on his last couple of days before he retires, asked the centre to prepare a national plan for oxygen supply, essential drugs and the method of vaccination. 
This comes after six different high courts across the country were hearing petitions related to the oxygen crisis, the lack of beds and, and remdesivir and other such drugs. The Supreme Court said, and I quote, we wish to take so more to cognizance of certain issues that we find in six high courts of Delhi, Bombay, Sikkim, Madhya Pradesh, Calcutta and Allahabad. Uh, now they are exercising their jurisdiction in best interest, but what's happening is some kind of confusion and diversion of resources. Remember, the Allahabad High Court had ordered for lockdowns in uh, different parts of Uttar Pradesh, which the Supreme Court then placed a stay on. The bench also appointed senior advocate Harish Salve um, as the amicus curiae in the matter, which is basically the person who will argue as a friend of the court. Uh, the move came after Delhi and Bombay High Court strongly criticized the central government's handling of the oxygen distribution across the country. This move to take over the High Court cases came under criticism from senior lawyers. Live Law, which is a legal website, quoted senior lawyers uh, Dushyant Dave, Mukul Rothki and others mm -hmm. who said the High Courts are within their jurisdiction to hear the matters they are currently looking at and they understand the realities of their respective states better. Mr. Dushyant Dave also criticized the appointment of Harish Salve as amicus curiae because he said it conflicted uh, there was a conflict of interest given that he represents the biggest industrial houses in the country, including Sterlite, which incidentally offered to the court that if its plant in Tamil Nadu is allowed to open, it would, off it would supply free oxygen to the country. The Sterlite plant was closed because of environmental violations. In fact, Mr. Dishin Dave has spoken to me on my YouTube channel. Uh, that's another interview that you can watch after this is done. The Ministry of Home Affairs has ordered that there will be no restriction of movement of medical oxygen between states. Transport authorities have been instructed to allow free interstate and intrastate movement of oxygen carrying vehicles accordingly. This comes after several states have been accusing each other of blocking or diverting oxygen supply. The Ministry of Home Affairs has said that oxygen is a public health commodity, medical oxygen, and any impediment to its transportation can critically impact the management of COVID patients across the country. No restriction is to be placed on oxygen manufacturers or suppliers to limit oxygen supplies to hospitals, states of union territories as they are located. No authority shall attach oxygen carrying vehicles uh, passing through their districts. The oxygen crisis continues in Delhi. The Delhi government has now released a list of six private hospitals in Delhi that have completely run out of oxygen as of this evening. Delhi's Akash Hospital put out an appeal on Twitter with the CEO making a request for immediate help. Earlier today, Dr. Sunil Sagar, CEO of the Shanti Mukund Hospital in Delhi, broke down and uh, teared up when he was giving an interview to the news agency ANI, saying that there were only two hours of oxygen left in his hospital saying that patients may die. He said, and I quote, we as doctors, we're supposed to give life, but if we can't give them oxygen, patients will die. Delhi's health minister, Satyendra Jain, has said the situation in different hospitals is different. Six hours of oxygen in some, eight, 10 in some others. We can't call this a comfortable situation. Delhi's Saroj Super Speciality Hospital has also moved to Delhi High Court seeking urgent directions to facilitate oxygen supply. The hospital currently has 130 patients, of which 70 are critical and in intensive care. 48 patients are now uh, on invasive or non-invasive ventilator support and need high flow oxygen. The most worrying part is that there is a waiting list of 172 patients, 64 of them critical uh, for high oxygen support requirements for the same hospital right now. The Punjab Chief Minister Amrinder Singh has written to the Union Health Minister Dr. Harshwardhan seeking at least 120 metric tons of oxygen on a daily basis for the entire state of Punjab. Chief Minister Singh has said that the capacity for storage of oxygen in all health facilities in the state is around 300 empty. The daily requirement is currently between 105 to 110 empty, but those figures are expected to rise. The Nagpur bench of the Bombay High Court has pulled up the Maharashtra government for not complying to its earlier order of directing the supply of 10,000 whales of remdesivir to COVID hospitals in Nagpur. The Nagpur bench noted that it was ashamed to be part of such a nasty and evil society and it was unable to do anything for the coronavirus patients in the state of Maharashtra. Quoting what was said in court, you are neglecting and ignoring our patients. We give you a solution and you do not follow it. You do not give us a solution. What absolute nonsense is going on here? End quote. 
it also said that the drug not being is not being made available as a violation of the fundamental rights of the people. According to NDTV, G.V. Prasad, the managing director of Dr. Reddy's laboratories, has said that Russia's Sputnik V COVID vaccine will be sold at about $10 a dose in India. That's 750 rupees per dose. Dr. Reddy's labs is a manufacturer of Sputnik V in India, which is the third vaccine to be approved and the first foreign vaccine to be cleared for use in India. G.V. Prasad has said several hundred thousand doses will be available uh, from May or June this year, but details are still being negotiated. Uh, Serum Institute of India has said the Os Oxford AstraZeneca COVID Shield vaccine will be sold at 400 rupees for governments and 600 rupees to private hospitals. Uh, the current deal that uh, is on with the central government at 150 rupees per dose will continue until all deliverables are made, and then after that, even the central government will have to pay 400 rupees per dose to uh, the Serum Institute of India. Some fresh restrictions have been announced by state governments in Maharashtra. Restrictions were announced last night uh, that basically said that public transport, which is the local trains, metro, monorail, will only be available for government employees, medical staff, specially abled people, and patients seeking treatment. Private passenger cars will no longer be allowed to be taken out unless you have a valid reason of emergency or essential services and you are not permitted to leave the city with your car. Inter-district, inter-city travel only in the case of medical emergencies or funerals. Weddings are now limited to just two hours in a single hall with 25 guests. In Assam, 300 passengers in Assam's Silchar Airport skipped the compulsory COVID test on arrival and fled from the testing center. The police are currently tracing these passengers and they will be booked, we understand, under relevant sections. Earlier this week, train commuters in Bihar's Buxar station also ran out of the station without getting tested. News now coming in uh, from the rest of the world. Singapore's health ministry has announced that it will not allow any entry from India for long-term visa holders or short-term visa holders who've had recent visits to India. According to Reuters, Singapore has said that it is investigating COVID-19 cases in migrant workers' dormitory for the possibility of reinfection and is quarantining more than 1,100 of the facility's residents. So far, 17 recovered workers have been found to be COVID positive in that dormitory. Meanwhile, Emirates Airlines has announced that it has suspended all flights between Dubai and India for the next 10 days, starting Sunday this week. France has said it will impose a 10-day quarantine on travellers coming in from India. In Pakistan, four people have been killed and 12 injured in an explosion that took place in the parking lot of a hotel in Quetta in Pakistan, according to uh, Reuters, who are quoting the Pakistani Interior Minister Sheikh Rashid Ahmad. Nongrong, who is the Chinese ambassador to Pakistan, was also staying in the same hotel, although he wasn't present at the hotel at the time of the explosion. It's still not clear whether the ambassador and his delegation were targets of the bombing. The European Union has proposed the first ever laws to regulate facial recognition and other AI-based technology. It prohibits the use of AI in gathering information about people's social behavior and a ban of law enforcement from using real-time biometric identifications. There will be an exception in situations like locating missing children and preventing terror attacks. Uh, news now from the world of science and technology. An instrument called MOXIE, which is currently attached to NASA's Perseverance rover, has just converted CO2 to oxygen. The technology could help astronauts breathe on Mars. Now, this is great news as oxygen apparently takes up a lot of space on spa spacecrafts and it's unlikely that astronauts headed to Mars will be able to carry enough oxygen with them. They'll need to produce their own oxygen on the surface of Mars within that atmosphere. Besides, breathing oxygen on Mars can also be used to produce rocket propellant. It takes MOXIE one hour to generate 10 grams of oxygen, which can be inhaled for 20 minutes. An update from uh, the world of sports. The Tokyo Olympics organizers have said that one policeman has tested positive for COVID-19 a day after his assignment last week in the Olympic torch relay. This was the first COVID case since the relay began on the 25th of March. Officials have said the policeman was wearing a mask and taking social distancing and other precautions seriously. 
This news comes at a time when Japan is preparing to declare the third state of emergency in the western metropolitan areas around Osaka and in Tokyo. One piece of positive information before we leave you for the day. As COVID-19 cases continue to surge in the country, there is a massive crunch for hospital beds. One mosque in Vadodara has been converted to a 50-bed facility. Irfan Sheikh, the trustee of the mosque, told ANI that amid the cases surging in the country, they decided to convert the mosque into a COVID facility of 50 beds. He also said there's no better time to do this than the month of Ramzan. That brings us uh, to the end of this bulletin. Uh, remember to stay home, wear your mask, take all precautions. Uh, I'd also request you to uh, follow the other videos that we're posting on our YouTube page, which have information about treatment and information about other issues that are going on in this country. Thank you for watching. Good night.